Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over Unit 6, Notes 1. So we are going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. So this is the Pythagorean Theorem. We did a little bit with this in Unit 3. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So your A and your B are always your legs and your C is your hypotenuse. So your hypotenuse always sits across from the right angle. Okay, so that's really important, and the legs are always attached to the right angle. So let's go ahead and let's do some practice problems with the Pythagorean Theorem. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 1. So I know this that 6 and 15 are my legs. So I have 6 squared plus 15 squared is equal to x squared. So then I get 36 plus 225 is equal to x squared. So then I get that x squared is equal to 261. So now I'm going to take the square root of 261, and I get 16.16 as my final answer for my x. So it's really important that you remember to take the square root. A lot of students tend to forget that when they get to the end of the problem, so just make sure you're doing that. So let's take a look at number 2. So for number 2, I notice that 7 and 17 are legs. So I have 7 squared plus 17 squared is equal to x squared. So 7 squared is 49. 17 squared is 289, and that's going to be equal to x squared. So x squared is going to be equal to 338. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, so I get that x is equal to 18.38. So that's my final answer for number 2. Now, let's take a look at number 3. So number 3, our x is actually one of our legs. So that means that we're going to have... 9 squared, but then I'm going to have plus x squared is equal to 11 squared. So then I get 81 plus x squared is equal to 121. So the first thing I want to do is solve for that x squared. So I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides. So 121 minus 81 is going to give me 40. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I end up getting x is equal to 6.32. And that's my final answer for number three. So now let's take a look at this chart. So common Pythagorean triples. So that means that the sides three, four, and five form a right triangle. So three and four are the legs, five is the hypotenuse. Same thing here. Five and 12 are the legs, 13 is the hypotenuse. Seven and 24 are the legs, 25 is the hypotenuse. So that holds true. So now we could take those common triples and we could multiply them by two. So I could have six, eight, and 10. That's a Pythagorean triple. Same thing here, multiplying that by two. 10, 24, 26. That's a Pythagorean triple. Same thing here, multiplying everything by two. 14, 48, and 50. That's a Pythagorean triple. So a Pythagorean triple is anything that's going to form a uh, right triangle. So the two legs squared equal the larger side squared. So same thing here. We could take what we have and multiply it by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, 12, and 15. That's a Pythagorean triple. Multiplying everything in here by 3, 15, 36, 39. That's a Pythagorean triple. Multiplying everything by 3 here, 21, 72, and 75. That's a Pythagorean triple. So basically, we could multiply any of these n number of times. So this 3 times n, 4 times n, 5 times n. So no matter what n is, that'll work out to be a Pythagorean triple. Same thing here, 5 times n, 12 times n, 13 times n. No matter what n is, that'll work out to be a Pythagorean triple. Same thing here, 24n and 25n. All of those would work out to be a Pythagorean triple. So we're going to be kind of using those when we go through this stuff today. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this theorem. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So basically, if we look at the Pythagorean at the legs and the side, if we know that the two smaller sides squared equal the third squared, then we can say that the triangle ABCD is a right triangle. So this is something that we did, if you think way back to unit three. I know that was a long time ago. Okay, so then if our, um, if our C squared, so our, our hypotenuse, is less than A squared plus B squared, so it's less than our two legs squared, then we have an acute triangle.
So remember, an acute triangle is all of your angles are less than 90 degrees. Okay, now, if we have an angle where we have one side is greater than the other two sides squared, then we can say that that is an obtuse triangle. So something that's important is that C always represents the largest number. So remember, an, opposite, an obtuse triangle has one angle that is greater than 90 degrees, just for a little refresher on our angles. So let's go ahead and let's try some of these. So, it says, determine whether or not the set of numbers can be measures of the size of a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute or obtuse. So, first of all, in order to identify something as a triangle, we need to take the two smaller sides and make sure they're bigger than the, bigger than the other side. Is 21 bigger than 16? Yes, so we have a triangle. So, now I need to see how 7 squared plus 14 squared relates to 16 squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this blank because we don't know what the relationship is. Well, 7 squared plus 14 squared, that's going to be 49 plus 196. How does that relate to 256? So then I end up getting 245. So that's going to be less than 256. So that means that I have an obtuse triangle because my C value squared is larger than my two sides added together. So let's take a look at this next one now. So I have 9 plus 40. Is that going to be bigger than 41? Is 49 bigger than 41? Yes, so I have a triangle. So then I'm going to do 9 squared plus 40 squared and see how that relates to 41 squared. Well, 9 squared is 81, 40 squared is 1,600, and 41 squared is 1,681. So here I get 1,681 is equal to 1,681. So since they're equal, it is going to be a right triangle. So that's going to be the relationship. So let's take a look at letter C. Is 1 plus 7 greater than 8? Is 8 greater than 8? No, it's equal to this. So no, this is not even a triangle, so we are unable to classify it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 6. We need to find x. So I'm going to write this out with the Pythagorean theorem. So x minus 5 quantity squared plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. Well, x minus 5 squared, that's going to be the same as x minus 5 times x minus 5. So I'm going to use that box method again. So I get x and negative 5, x and negative 5. x times x is x squared. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. So then here I get x squared minus 10x, when I combine those two, plus 25 8 squared is 64, and that's going to be equal to x squared. Well, here I can subtract the x squareds from both sides, so that's going to cancel out. So then I'm going to have negative 10x plus um, 89 is equal to 0. So now I'm going to bring that 89 over to the other side. So I get negative 10x is equal to negative 89. Divide both sides by negative 10, and I get that x is equal to 8.9. So that right there is my final answer for number 6. Last but not least, let's take a look at number 7. It wants us to find the perimeter and the area of the shape below. Well, in order for us to get the perimeter, we need to know what this side right here is. So I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem on that triangle. So these two are each my legs. So I have 12 squared plus 7 squared is equal to x squared. So then I'm going to have 144 plus 49 is equal to x squared. So x squared is going to be equal to 193. Take the square root, and I get that x is equal to 13.89. So in order to get the perimeter, I'm going to add 13.89 plus 7 plus 15 plus 12 plus 15. And when I add all of that together, I get 122.89 centimeters. So now I need to get the area. So to get the area, I'm going to start by getting the area of this rectangle. So the rectangle is 15 by 12. So that's going to be 180. 
Then I need to get the area of this triangle. Well, the area of a triangle, remember, is one half your base, which is seven, times your height, which is 12. So that's going to give you 42. So now, to get the area of the entire thing, all I have to do is do 180 plus 42, and when I do that, I get 222 centimeters squared. So that's my final answer for number seven, and that concludes your note video. Thanks for listening.